Psalms chapter 81 to the chief musician upon Giddeth, which we discovered, which we did in Psalms chapter 8, which I believe was a wine press, a psalm of Asaph. This breaks down into two parts in this chapter. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Strength is not in military, weaponry, tanks, horses, men. That's why God in the law did not, want which David failed, that's why God did not, in the law, told Israel not to do a census. You say, what's so big deal about a census? Well, if you count all the men that are able to go to war, then you're going to say, wow, look how many we got. But if you, if you read through the Bible, the Old Testament, and you see that many times Israel was outnumbered, and they still won the battle. It's not in, it's not in numbers. It's in God the strain. Make a joyful noise unto God of Jacob. Now, I really truly believe that that verse, make a joyful noise, is for those who can't sing. I don't think it's rock and roll music. I believe a person does not have a voice to sing or to sing to God. All right, now, take a psalm. That's what we're reading. So the Bible is its own dictionary. We've been talking about singing. We've been talking about rejoicing the Lord. And it says, take a psalm. Psalms is your hymnal. Psalms 81, 1 and 2. And bring hither the timbre as a musical instrument. A timbrel can be used to praise God. A pleasant heart with the sultry. And you're going to find through the Bible that there are musical instruments that are approved of God. And you don't see drum or electric guitar. They didn't have electric guitar. They don't have a guitar. A pleasant heart. It plays present music. It's not the, the noise that's the, the music instrument. The instrument plays beautiful. It's for the spirit and not the flesh. Blow up the trumpet. Now this is not for singing. Blow the trumpet in the new moon and in the Jewish time of the calendar, their first day was the moon at its fullest. Jewish time, Jewish calendar is not solar, it is lunar, moon. They would have, their calendar is not like our calendar, February 29, 28, whatever, some days 30, some 31. Their calendar was 30 days based upon the moon. Blow up the trumpet and the new moon would be a, a feast time. It's the new. It's the new of the uh, month. Let's rejoice in God. It was a feast day. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day, there were feast days that you were to blow the trumpet and rejoicing of the Lord, singing, praising God. How do you know where the church where the church is going wrong? Because most churches are used to have these, they put a dingling in the belfry. They didn't say ring the bell. They said blow the trumpet. Even the government has got it right when you live in nuclear communities that they got this thing that sounds like a loud trumpet when there's a warning. And then they use a liberty bell to proclaim liberty and all that, and the thing cracks. You were supposed to blow a trumpet, not a bell. I wonder what kind of history you can get from the bell. I didn't go into that. So in time of feast days, there were to be singing, there were to be musical instruments, and there would be the trumpet. Now watch, for this was a statute for Israel. And a law of God of Jacob. It was the law. <coughs> it's in the law. 
Leviticus 23, 24, and Numbers 10, 10. This he, God, ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt where I heard a language that I understood not. So Israel had the same problems that we do in America today. There was, there was several different languages. The English, the English, the Egyptians spoke a different language than the Jews. And when you get, when you read into the, into the life of Moses and said that there were taskmasters and there were heads of the Jews, in between those two groups of people, there were probably interpreters. Moses was skilled in both languages. Moses did not speak by interpreter before Pharaoh or Aaron. I removed his shoulder from the burden. Go back in Exodus and say, you know, they, they, the, the Egyptians made him serve with rigor. Israel was under burden. How come when you talk about slavery, you never talk about the land of hand colored Egyptian taking the Jew and putting them under slavery with rigor? Huh? When did you ever read about Americans with the slavery killing the male children? As Egypt did with the Jews. When did you get Americans saying that this was an abomination? When the Egyptians had abomination against shepherds, Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the white man gave the colored man God in America. And Jesus Christ. It was so harsh. I mean, slavery is harsh, but... Why did some of the black people come up with their songs? His hands were delivered from the pots. I don't know. Pots for making uh, the brick. Maybe pots for cleaning. Dishwashers. Maybe pots for bringing water from the Nile to the crops. Thou callest in trouble. And the Jews cried unto God. And the Bible says God heard them. And I delivered thee, the Jews. I answered thee in a secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Oh, there's that second advent. It's what God has done for you. And we're going to start now getting into trouble. And there's a church, I forget which one, in Revelation chapters uh, 2 and 3, that lost its first love. And what we call with Jacob going back to Bethel. And I, I talked about as we've gone through the, the Psalms, as we've gone through the Bible, God wants you to remember. God is the God of history. He wants you to remember and count your blessings and name them one by one because if you don't, you're going to forget. And when we look at Meribah, when they came to the waters there, they could not drink. And we learn something else. It says that God spoke, which is not recorded. Exodus 17, 6 and 7, Numbers 20, 13, that God spoke from the thunder. You know, the Bible speaks about God in his voice as thunder. I proved thee at the waters of it. God was going to see how they were going to react if they were going to trust in God. God will put you through those, those trying times in your life to show you where you stand as a Christian. As victorious or as you need a lot more work. Hear, O my people, Jews, New Te uh, Old Testament, excuse me. It's not church. 
I will testify unto thee, O Israel. See? Don't go stealing things out of context. The Bible's written to three people. Jews, Gentiles, and Christians. And maybe a fourth, the entire world, where it says, it's talking about that no other king shall sit in the prophecy of the, birth, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Oh, earth, 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 here. Write this man childless, Kaniah. If thou will hearken unto me, God's going about to get into something here that they didn't do. They did not hearken. And we know. We've been reading. We're already up to Psalms 81. And we see that they did not hearken. And you can go and apply this for the church. There shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shall thou worship any strange God. All right. Let me get, let me get nice and hey, here we are. We're, we're, yesterday with the Passover. Churches are going to celebrate this Sunday Easter. Easter is not for Christians. It is a Roman holiday. Do you worship a man or do you worship a woman with boobies? What are you talking about, Brother Hayward? Estar. Easter. A idol that a of a woman that had multiple boobies that take care of children. That's Easter. And what is churches going to do? They're going to send out their children to go look for multiple eggs. For a multiple woman, for a woman that has multiple boobies. I don't like you talking like that. That's the truth. I'm surprised they don't have eggs and milk for, for church breakfast on that day. Think about the waste of the food that God has given to us that is going to be a waste of eggs being colored that cannot be eaten. How many eggs are going to be ruined in this time of the year when it's supposed to be given to us as a food that we're supposed to thank God for? it? And you don't thank God for, for changing an egg. Easter, Estar, is a strange God. How about a strange God that died on Friday and rose on Sunday, which is not three days and three nights? That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible died and was buried and arose three days and three nights according to Scripture. That other Jesus that died on Friday, Baptist churches, is not a scriptural Jesus. It is another God. And I have heard two Baptist churches where I live that proclaim Good Friday. And you are worshiping another Jesus that Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11. You are a liar. And you are of your father the liar, Satan, who Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes in John chapter 8. There are strange gods going on in the Baptist churches today. How many Baptists? Listen, I'm not talking to the unsaved people. I'm talking to you that are saved. How many of you born-again Christians are going to rise up for sunrise service? Where Jeremiah said that God told Jeremiah, look, they look towards the east and they worship Baal. That's another God. A strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Did God bring you out of Egypt? Did he bring you out of the world? Did he save you? And then you turn around and you go worship strange gods. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Feeding. Feeding. You know why some of you ain't fed? You know why some of you ain't grown up to maturity in Christian life? You haven't opened your mouth for God to feed you. You let Satan feed you. 
but my people would not hearken to my voice. Oh, that's today. That's the church house today. He says in Jeremiah about the tree, don't go out and cut it and, you know, set it up and put uh, tinsel and everything. He tells you not to do that, but the church does. The church does. It's not what God told you to do. And Israel would not, and Israel would none of me. There are things going on in the Christian life that the Bible says you're not to do, and you are doing it. And you do it because you're rebelling outright against God. And some of you know, to him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And don't come off with the alibi reading the law. Oh, I didn't know. You got a Bible. You can buy a Bible. You can get a King James Bible. You can get them free from churches. I was shocked to find a King James Bible in the hotel room that we were in a couple weeks ago. You can get a King James Bible. Don't you go to me and say, and don't you go to God and say, I never knew. Not in America, my friend. Walmart has Bibles. And you can read from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, and you can know. And you can open your mouth and say, God, as I open up your words, feed me. Feed me. For the word is spoken of as bread. The word is spoken as as milk. The word is spoken as honey. All natural things. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. That's a shame. That is a shame that churches today are doing whatever they want and going about the world. Read Revelation 3 in a church called Ladder to Sea. And when you finish that chapter, read where Jesus Christ is. I have been in too many churches where you could write Ichabob. You know what Ichabob is? Why don't you? It may describe your church, my friend. So I, God, I'm, I'm doing, I'm telling you what the, what the pronouns are. I gave them up unto their own heart lust this verse right here you mark it you underline it this is what you do not want God to do to you in your life I like it okay I'll keep you in that sin and at the judgment seat of Christ You'll lose. I don't want to open my mouth and have God fill it. I enjoy what I'm doing. All right, God will keep on letting you do what you're going to do. And judgment seat of Christ, you'll fail. Ashes. You may ask yourself, why is that person involved in what they're doing? Why is God allowing that in their life? Why? <clears throat> Why are there so many churches? I think between our house and the, the street ministry we have and down Daytona Beach, I think we count 12, if not more, churches on one, on one road. You leave our driveway and turn on the main road, and we, we go all the way down Brackley, all the way to Ocean Walk. He said, why does God allow those churches? If he really, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Why did God allow those churches? Why does God allow the, the Roman Catholic? Why does he allow the Lutherans, the Jehovah Witnesses, and the Mormons? Why is my family involved in the Jehovah Witnesses? Why are they involved in the Roman Catholic Church? Why will they not come out? Because that's exactly what they want. 
You say, well, I witness to my friend and they won't listen and they just keep on going the way they're going because that's maybe that that's what they want. Woe to you when you get to the time in your life where God turns you over to your heart's lust. You're going to fail. You're not going to have comfort. You're not going to have God there for you. People go to these perverted churches because they want to. And God says, okay. God told Israel, listen, what do you want? Do you want me or do you want a king? We want a king. You really want a king? Samuel, tell them, do they really want a king? Yes, we want a king. You better warn them. This is what this king's going to be like. We still want a king. Okay, I'll give you a king. And how many kings were there before Jerusalem was destroyed? And now there's no king in Israel at all until Jesus Christ comes. And they walk in their own councils. You don't want God to leave you and put you on a shelf. You can be a, a child in rebellion against God and all the whippings that God does to you because he loves you and you are his son. And you can just keep on doing it and keep on walking away from God. And God will eventually say, go. Go ahead. Read the prodigal son. I mean, that father tried to stop that son, but that son one day got up and left, and the father stayed right where he was. And that prodigal son, look what happened to him. How was that love restored when he came back and repented to his father? His father never went down and got him back. Well, I know somebody who's sinning on that. I'm praying for God. No, no, that's the wrong prayer. You got to pray that God will work that guy's heart, that the sinner that, that has gone disobedient for God, that God will work in that heart to bring him back to God. That's what repenting is. That's what repentance is all about. That is what's lacking in the churches today. Just say this prayer and you're saved. And he continues to say, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Had they listened to Jesus? Had they listened to God? The millennium would have been all over. Christ came on this, on this planet somewhere between 0 to 33 A.D., somewhere in there. Had they obeyed God a thousand years, the millennium would have been over completely, and New Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth would be here by now. How's that sound? Jesus said, if they had would believe who he was, uh, John the Baptist would have became, would have became Elijah. Isn't that interesting? But not listening to God, you've got now 2014 years thereabout. And there are Jews that are dying today. There was three of them just shot outside their, their synagogue the other day, their community. And they if they had not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, I don't know. Maybe they had. I don't know, but if they had not believed, any Jew that does not believe Jesus Christ as their Savior and as their Messiah that died on the cross and was, and was buried and arose again on the third day will burn in hell God's people. You know where Caiaphas is today? He's burning in hell. Because he rejected. He would have not of God's counsel. <clears throat> And Israel had walked in my way. Had they done what God wanted to do. Can you picture what the beauty of Israel would be of today? 
It's not beautiful today. I've seen pictures. There would be no United Nations. Israel, Jerusalem would be the center of the world. There would be no dumb of the rock. That dumb of the rock would be the temple stew there of Solomon. You know what God told Solomon through the, to the law? First of all, you're to write out the law. Every king that would sit down on the throne to write his own law. I wonder if Solomon did that. Because in the law it says you're not to go back to Egypt to get any horses. <clears throat> he failed that one. Number two, he's not to multiply gold and silver to himself. <clears throat> failed that one. And number three, he's not to multiply wives to himself. <clears throat> failed that one. He did not obey God. He did not do what God told him to do. So God says, okay, go ahead, marry those women. Go ahead and multiply those horses. Go ahead. And then his entire life was messed up by those women. Because he ended up serving other gods. And look where his temple is today. Rubble. And that welling wall that's over there right now, that's not even Solomon's temple. That's the temple that Herod rebuilt or fixed up or, you know, uh, remodelized of Ezra. Had they done what, what God told them to do, Solomon's temple would still be here. And Jesus Christ would be sitting on, those, on that throne up on those six steps. And there would be no sin today because sin would be eradicated. Death would be conquered. It would be all, and here we would be in perfect. And us Gentiles today would be maybe, you know, I believe the Gentiles and the Jews are going to give birth to children. I know that. We might be children of the new, new earth. You imagine being born without any pain or sorrow that you suffered how long you are today? Why? Because they didn't obey. Because we don't obey. History would be so much better had they obeyed God wonder. History for us, the present day, had I obeyed God and what he told me, I would not be suffering the things I am suffering today. And will suffer tomorrow, Lord willing. You know what sin is? When you don't do God's way. You don't hearken unto God. That is the number one sin. I don't care what sin it is. I don't care if it's sexual. I don't care if it's liquid. I don't care if you smoke it. I don't care if you eat it. I don't care. Whatever you do with that sin, the sin is the result because God told you not to do it and you keep doing it. All have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. We are sinners. And we need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse us. And to the rapture. When God gives us that new perfect body. Look at this. 14. I should soon have subdued their enemies. That did not happen in the book of Judges. Go back and read it. Go back and study it. You know, I know he's dead and gone, probably burning in hell. You know, uh, Yasser Arafat, whatever his name is. You know, if Israel had obeyed God, they would not ever had a problem with Yasser Arafat. God told him, wipe out all of them. The Philistines that are there today are because of Israel's disobedience. The Arabians that are running around there. You know why the Arabians are running around there? Because Abraham had a lust of another woman. Hagar. And he had a child named Ishmael. And how many years has Ishmael still been a burden to Israel? 
And God said, if you had obeyed my way, if you would hearken to me, I'd take care of all your enemies. If America would have obeyed the Bible and not allowed religions to practice in this country, you would have no Roman Catholic Church, you would have no morons, you would have no Jehovah Witnesses, you would have Bible-believing King James Bible, Jesus born, saved by his blood, churches only. But you wanted to put a clause to practice religion freely in America. Now you've got a yellow page, yellow book of yellow pages in the phone book of pages after pages after pages of churches that are not right with God. They are of Satan. And I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying about the Constitution. That Constitution allows satanic churches to operate in this country. While the government is trying to take the Bible-believing church and sink it. Had you obeyed God in the Bible as a nation, the Old Testament, Old Testament is for a nation, you got rid of those religions, got rid of those relics, got rid of those items, got rid of those idols, got rid of those statues, we would be a clean nation before God. But no. And some of you don't like what I just said. Tough cookies. It is the truth. The freedom of religion has allowed everyone to come up. David Koresh and all of them. Every occult. Every false church. Oh, what do you think? You think you should have killed them? No, I think you should have run them out. You know the Seven Day Adventists. You know David Koresh. You know the morons. You know the Jehovah Witnesses. You know those are all fruits of America. The American tree, those are fruits that are hanging that started and founded and established in God bless America. Not Mary Baker Eddy and all that are fruits of America. They are not fruits from the King James Bible, from God, from the Lord Jesus Christ. God never told you to have multiple wives so you can have alien children coming and incorporating them. God had never told you to teach that Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus. Charismatic movement is a movement of America. T-I-C. America, America has left God, I see. And some of you out there, you want a Christian president, you ain't going to get him. Because you ain't got a Christian nation. If he's not allowed in the courtroom, if he's not allowed in the school, you think he's going to show up in the White House? You are a fool. Enemies would be destroyed if we obey God. And turn my hand against their adversaries. You know what the Middle East would look like if, if Israel had obeyed God? Have you read the victorious victories? We just read as a family in our Bible study tonight that this army came into Israel. They were going to attack and they said, hey, I see blood. Ha <laughs> ha, they, they killed them all themselves. So they dropped their weapons. They're going to go in there and spoil. And they walk right into Israel's hands and Israel conquered them. God told him, say, hey, listen, I want you to go around this, this city once. I want you to go around twice. And on the seventh day, I want you to go, go around seven times, and the priest blowing trumpets, and when I tell you, you shout. Uh, that's stupid orders. Gideon, 
Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. All right, this is your weapon. All right, bazooka, flamethrowers, tank. Nope. A pot, a candle, and a trumpet. Hmm? Samson, I want you to take that jawbone of an ass. Heck, Samson, I want you to take those two columns and destroy you. God will subdue the enemy. Don't you dare think you're going to fight Satan yourself. Don't you think you're going to run into hell with that water gun? You say, no. I heard a preacher say that. And he used to call Satan old smutty face. No, he's got a worldly rock and roll church today. I was before we came down to Florida, I was going to go back in that church and I looked it up on the internet. No way. Nope. Just going to keep on going. And turn my hand against their adversaries. You know why they got enemies and adversaries? You know why they got the United Nuts against them? Because they're not doing what God told them to do. As that nation cried out, crucify him, crucify him. That nation should call out and say, hey, Lord, you know what? We've read the Bible. We believe it. we got to get a red heifer. We're wrong. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Wouldn't that be nice? As I preach on the street, if we pass out gospel track. Oh, I hate your God. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I will be saved. Really? Yeah, believe with the heart and with righteousness and confession with the mouth. Salvation is made. What must I do? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Repent of your sin. All right. That hasn't happened. They'll continue to walk on and hate God. But their time should have endured forever. God's not willing that any should perish. God don't want to send you to hell. God wants you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants you to repent of your sins. God wants you to do what he told you to do. God wants you to, to re, not rebel. God told you. He gave you a specific will. He gave you a specific, specific plan. It is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many. Many. Why? Because they don't want to do what God tells them to do. So they'll be cast off into hell. Against what God really wants. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. I wonder how much wheat they produce over there now today. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. God wanted to give them a blessing. That's a blessing. That fine wheat and honey out of the rock. Now let me tell you something, Christian. I've been shouting my voice off and everything like that. And you probably, you probably you haven't heard any kind of preaching like this before. You probably think I'm an idiot. I'm not a fairy tale preacher dressed up in pink in a, in a pulpit. Do you want to be blessed by God? You want the full blessings of God? First of all, you need to be saved. You need to turn from your sins, repent of your sins, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And believe with your heart. And confess to others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, and 10. You are a sinner, Romans 3.10 and 3.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, my Lord. Is he your Lord? Then you need to, next command of God, you need to be baptized. Not baptism for salvation. Salvation first, then be baptized. 
you need to find a King James 1611 believing, honoring, loving, devoted to in private and in public church. Who does not say verily, verily means truly, truly. And I don't mean a church where you get 25 minutes of music and 5 minutes sermon. I ain't talking about a church that the Hebrew and the Greek says this. I ain't talking about a church that comes up with a puppetry and a puppetry and any other kind of pew. Christ honoring, Bible loving church. And you need to start in Genesis and read the Revelation. And yes, there's dull reading. And yes, there's going to be places in there. Oh. And you need, the Bible says, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. You need to find out what God said to you, what God said to the Jew, what God says to the people. you got to find out what God wants from you. And what's the next step when you find out what God wants from you? Do it. No rebellion. And then you can sing aloud unto God our strength and make a joyful noise unto God of Jacob. Take a song, bring hither the tremble and pleasant heart with a sultry, blow up the trumpet and new moon and time appointed on our solemn feast day. You can feast and rejoice in the Lord. Christian. Can you sing and praise the Lord when God has got you bent over your, his knees with your butt showing and the rod coming upon it? You can't sing during that time. You think that prodigal son could sing while he's having corn with the, with the pig? I've got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. I don't think so. But when he came back to the father's house, temple, pleasant heart, sultry, there was singing. There was a fatted calf. There was a rejoicing. Christians, stop, stop disobeying. Stop rebelling against God. Put your sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and weep over them. And do what God tells you to do. And you're only going to know by the book. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his return.